Hello everyone and welcome to Edusearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai. Today we are going to discuss on a very recent study on surgery for gallbladder cancer which highlights the role of robotics, laparoscopy and open surgery for carcinoma gallbladder. So the study is IRON study. It's a retrospective international multi-center study on Robotic versus laparoscopy, so that is one arm, and robotic versus open approach, that is the other arm in gallbladder cancer. So a lot of centers, high volume centers, especially centers which have more than 40 liver resections per year, or nearly more than 20 minimal invasive and more than 20 robotic liver resections before including in the study, that is how they have included the centers. Now, understand that this is a retrospective study. So, it's more of an observational study. International multi-center and approaches are robotic laparoscopy and open. Why this is important? Because when you see a retrospective study, you know that randomization is not possible, right? If it's a trial, if it's a prospective study, you can randomize the patients and you can remove bias. So, this is more of a retrospective study an observational study actually and this is the strobe which is a flow diagram of observational studies as per the guidelines and what you can understand from here is that when it is an observational study to make it as reliable or to reduce bias from an observational retrospective data a technique of statistics is used which is known as propensity score matching okay and this is very important to understand because if you don't understand what is propensity score matching you will not understand the results of this trial okay because the results of this trial are as good as the propensity scores and the covariance that you have used for propensity scoring so what is propensity scoring going back a step if you know what is randomization in a study, then you will easily understand propensity score because it is basically a surrogate to randomization in a retrospective study. So if it's a prospective trial, we can randomize the patients, we can neutralize some of the characteristics. Like if we want to do a robotic versus laparoscopy study, in a prospective manner, what we can do, we can select patients for age, right? That we will say that 40 to 45, one in robotic, one in laparoscopy, you are randomizing them by eliminating some of the common factors, right? Like gender, male, one each, Charlson comorbidity index, ASA, BMI. So you can do your randomization and you can eliminate some of the factors to avoid heterogeneity in the population, right? So, heart for heart, star for star, something like that, okay? If you have seen our statistics videos, how to randomize in your samples, we have a specific video on it. But you can't do this in a retrospective study, right? Retrospective is just like data collection. So, in retrospective or observational studies, what we do is we identify these same factors, okay, which are known as propensity score covariates, okay. You can see in the stroke diagram that they have mentioned propensity score covariates, okay. And these covariates are then matched between the data, okay. So, since this study has two arms, it has robotic versus laparoscopy and robotic versus open, to match the covariates, one of the arm has to be referenced. As you can see on both the sides, robotics is there. So, robotics becomes the reference arm. And what you can do is you match your propensity score covariates in a way that robotic versus open can be compared and robotic versus laparoscopy can be compared, eliminating the effect of covariates on your results. Okay. What I mean is that these covariates will not affect your result, right? So, if the difference is significant, those differences are nullified. That is how propensity score matching is done. So, suppose there are patients with a mean age of 90 in one arm and mean age of 40 in the other arm, the outcomes will be different in these two. These two can't be compared, right? So, propensity score matching helps you in getting say same age or same gender so whatever covariates are there these become the matching criteria okay 
and robotics in this study is the reference arm. So understand that when you are reading this article, covariates are important. So the covariates for gallbladder surgery as per this study are age, gender, ASN, Charlson index, BMI, CA 19.9. Previous abdominal surgery, biliary duct resection, T stage and N stage. So these are the covariates. So both arms have been matched for these variates so that the results are not affected by these variables, right? So what are the basic study details? They have included T1, B and above. The exclusion criteria is histopathologic staging of T4. So T4 disease is not included. And this is important to understand. If you go into the details of this trial, they have also mentioned that for T4 disease, if you are operating open is a better approach. R2 positive rejection margins have been excluded. This is very important because what this means is that R2 positive margins, as we know, is a poor prognostic indicator, but this has been excluded. If you have done a simultaneous organ rejection, that has been excluded. M1 during surgery, these cases have been excluded. So what is the aim of this study? The primary aim is to look at oncologic clearance. Okay, At least six nodes rejected, that is the primary aim. And secondary is short and long term oncologic outcomes. Right. So as we have discussed, propensity score matching has been done in this study. So we have seen the covariates. Now, if you can see the difference, okay, say gender, male, 96 versus 45, you can compare this age group, right? So what happens after propensity score matching, it changes to 32 and 35, right? So before and after propensity score matching, you can see that the significant differences have been nullified. If you look at the difference in ASA score, it has been nullified. Previous abdominal surgery, 121 versus 60. Propensity score matching, 47 and 48. So this is what we do, right, in propensity score matching. Just like randomization in a prospective study, this is a surrogate for randomization in observational or retrospective study. Similarly, you can say T2, 148 versus 47. We have changed it to 39 and 38. So what actual propensity propensity score matching does is it assigns value to each variable and then it is compared with the data and same valued variables are selected in either arm. So for example, say a 45 year old male is assigned a value. Okay, then similar value 45 year old will be in the other arm. So that is how you keep matching the two. So pink color in one, pink color in other, something like that. Okay. And that is how you try to eliminate heterogeneity in the data in the two arms that are for comparison. So now looking at the outcomes, what p-value suggests is significance, right? So for all data where p-value is less than 0 0.05, okay, or less than 0 0.001 is highly significant, okay? So you can see that for all the values where p-value is less than 0 0.001 or even less than 0 0.05, the robotics has done better than the comparison arm because robotic is the reference group. You can see robotic on both sides, right? So robotic versus open, we can see that the lymph node retrieval has been better in robotic versus open. Right, The median value is also better and the total lymph nodes retrieved is also better. Similar can be seen in robotic versus laparoscopy. But this is within the inclusion criteria. Remember that T4 is not included. The simultaneous organ rejection group is not included. R2 margin cases are not included. Right. Similarly, if we look at intraoperative blood loss, the difference is significant between robotic and open as well as robotic and lab. What that means is that robotic is better in terms of intraoperative blood loss, right? Similarly, you can look at all these data, robotic versus open, conversion rate is lower in robotic compared to laparoscopy. So that is again an advantage of robotics.
time to flatus, time to regular diet and length of stay. These are variables where lobotics and laparoscopic more or less are similar because both of them are minimally invasive. Whereas as compared to open, robotics has fared better by a small margin, right? Rest of the data, more or less, the outcomes are similar for all three. So you can say that more or less the outcomes are similar, but robotics has fared better for number of lymph nodes. But is this actually significant? Is this change of say one day between robotic and open actually significant? When we see the univariate and multivariate analysis, we see that the difference is because of the experience of the surgeons when doing these resections. Okay. If you see the multivariate analysis, the most important factor is the experience of the centers and the teams in MIS resection, right? So that is a very important point to understand. Remember how these analyses are done? Again, going into a bit of statistics because these terms are important to understand. So univariate analysis, uni is one. So we check one variable with the outcome, okay? So univariate analysis and what is the outcome that we are studying? We are studying yield of greater than or equal to six nodes because that is the primary aim of the study, right? So univariate, that is compare gender with outcome six nodes, compare age with outcome six nodes. You keep comparing all the factors that you want to compare. So you can see that some of the factors are important in univariate like BMI, okay, 0 0.003, this is significant, right? So for all of the data where the p-value is less than 0 0.05, like 0 0.031, age is significant. So all with this asterisk mark are significant. But that is when they are compared individually with the outcome. That is why it is known as univariate analysis, one-on-one. -on -one. What is multivariate analysis on the other end? You select the factors of univariate analysis that are significant. So you can see that all the factors with the asterisks are taken together, okay? And then we see when they are taken together, what is the factor that is most significant after doing a multivariate analysis that is done using logistic regression methods, okay? beyond the scope of this video, but you have to understand the difference between univariate and multivariate analysis. Univariate is one variable to one outcome. Multivariate is we are looking at which of these significant univariates are most significant, okay? So a p-value by using all of them versus the outcome will give you your result of multivariate analysis. And in multivariate, which are significant factors? We can see one is the experience of the surgeon. The other is robotic versus open and robotic versus laparoscopy. Robotic has been found to be superior in this study for the primary outcome. Whenever we do oncologic study reviews, it is very important to look at the survival curves and what is very important to note here is that the overall and disease-free survival have not been different at 100 to 120 months of follow-up, okay? This is a very important factor because a lot of times we see like robotics thinking the study is positive. The study is positive for its aim, which is the lymph node retrieval. But if you can achieve similar lymph node retrieval with laparoscopy or open surgery, you are still going to give similar survival to the patient. So the patient also need to understand that selection of approach has to be based on the surgeon's preference and the surgeon's experience and the surgeon's analysis of the scan, patient fitness, as well as the extent of disease and the inclusion criteria of the study. We saw that advanced disease has been excluded from this study. And that is a place where most of the patients present in some of the countries. So we have to be very careful when we are analyzing studies like this so that we can come to relevant conclusions to apply in your practice. Limitations of study, like I said, it's a retrospective study. So there is an inherent selection bias in retrospective study. Of course, propensity score matching helps in reducing this bias, but not to complete extent. 
cost is a very important selection parameter even in this study and that is a limitation because what if the cost was not a factor would you have taken more cases for robotics would that have changed the data we don't know neoadjuvant and adjuvant therapy implications have not been incorporated into the study so that is also an important limitation Multicenter heterogeneity. What does that mean? That means that different surgeons are operating on the patients and even that can affect the outcome. So multicenter trials, data keeping, different surgeons, different units managing the patient. Some units may have protocol that the patient not started on diet on the first day. Then that changes your result of length to regular diet, right? So that is multicenter heterogeneity. And this can be completely ignored in a retrospective multicenter study. Thank you.